This video will cover in detail the motor, sensory, and reflex components of the neurological examination. We will divide the exam into motor, reflex, and sensory sections. However, please note that there are many ways to organize the neurological exam depending on the clinical context and environment. Hi, Paulina. My name is Dr. Valerio. Today we're going to be doing the motor examination with reflexes, sensory examination. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, so we will start with the motor examination, which includes inspection, pronator drift, tone, and power. Inspect the patient. Look specifically for both general and limb posture, muscle bulk, and involuntary movements. Look for common abnormalities such as tremor, which is a rhythmic oscillation around a joint, or fasciculations, which are involuntary repetitive muscle contractions best examined under tangential lighting. On general inspection, there is normal muscle bulk, um, no evidence of atrophy or fasciculations, and no abnormal movements such as uh, tremor. And we're going to start with, can you extend your arms and palms facing to the ceiling, and just hold it there and close your eyes for me. This test has a high sensitivity for detecting weakness due to motor neuron lesions in the corticospinal tracts. If pronator drift is present, the patient's hand will pronate and their arm will drift downward. It may take several seconds for pronator drift to occur, so be sure to hold this pose for at least 15 seconds. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to tone. Can I take your hand? Tone is the amount of residual resistance offered by a muscle when it's moved passively. Assess tone in the upper limb by rotating the wrist and flexing and extending the elbow. Feel for constant stiffness, which indicates rigidity. And the other side. Catching, which indicates spasticity. And decreased tone, which indicates flaccidity. Being able to distinguish normal and abnormal tone will come with practice. Okay. So tone is normal. There's no evidence of rigidity or spasticity. And then we will move on to um, power testing. When assessing muscle power, use the MRC scale to quantify your findings. Grade 5 is normal strength against full resistance. Grade 4 is reduced strength against resistance and can be further broken down into 4 plus, 4, and 4 minus. Grade 3 is movement against gravity with resistance removed. Grade 2 is movement only when gravity is removed. Grade 1 is a flicker of movement in the muscle. And grade 0 is no movement at all. To test muscle power, use a systematic approach. Neurologists usually like to test proximal to distal. We will focus on testing only a few key muscle groups in this video. Okay, can you hold your arms out like this and just resist me? Good, and now hold your arms out like this and pull in. When testing power, it's important to isolate the muscle being tested. And now I'm going to get you to push out. Use one hand to immobilize the proximal joint. Always compare muscle power on both sides before moving on to the next muscle. Okay, I'm going to ask you to extend your wrist like this. And now the other side. Now can you turn your arm over and make a fist and bring it in? And resist me. Good, now turn your hand over again and extend your fingers. Keep them strong. Good, now turn over again, flex your fingers. Remember to apply pressure that's appropriate to the muscle being tested. And now can I get you to extend your fingers like this? When testing finger abduction, use your index and pinky fingers to apply pressure. Excellent, now turn your hand over, bring your thumb in just like that and up towards the ceiling and hold it strong. So 
so there's full power in the distal upper extremities. So we're going to continue with the motor exam of the lower limbs, starting with tone. Can I get you to lie back comfortably? And relax your lower limbs. To assess tone in the lower limbs, gently roll the legs back and forth. Next, lift the patient's leg up from the knee, first slowly, then quickly. As with tone in the upper limb, feel for rigidity, spasticity, and flaccidity. We will now examine the ankles for clonus. Clonus is a series of involuntary rhythmic muscle contractions and relaxations. To elicit clonus, support the patient's leg, briskly dorsiflex the foot, and sustain the dorsiflexion. Clonus may be a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion, but a few beats of clonus can also be a normal finding. I guess you to take this leg and lift it up towards your chest and hold it right there at that angle, as strong as you can. Good, and now relax that. And same with the other leg. And hold it there as strong as you can. Excellent, and down. And now I'm gonna ask you to take your heel and keep it into the bed as strong as you can. Hold it strong, 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 strong. Excellent. And now this side, the same thing. Keep it as strong as you can into the bed. Excellent. Now just bend your legs halfway slightly and push in against my hands. Push in. Excellent. Now push out against my hands. Excellent. And now relax. Okay, now can I get you to bring your knee up again and hold it in this position as strong as you can and bring your heel downwards. Excellent. And relax. Now, same with this leg. Bring it at a 90 degree angle and bring it downwards. Excellent, and now relax. Now bring this leg up, same position, and extend your leg as much as you can. Excellent. And now this side, extend as much as you can. Excellent, and now relax. Can you bring your feet, just your feet, back up towards your nose and hold it as strong as you can? Good, good. And now can you bring your feet inwards like this? Excellent. And now out this way. And now down like on a gas pedal. Excellent. We will divide the reflex section of the exam into upper limb reflexes and lower limb reflexes. Testing reflexes is a good way to examine sensory neurons, motor neurons, and descending inhibitory neurons in the spinal cord. When assessing reflexes, use the deep tendon reflex grading scale to quantify your findings. Note that this scale is somewhat subjective and requires some experience to distinguish normal from abnormal. A grade zero reflex is no reflex. A grade one reflex is diminished and often requires a reinforcement maneuver such as the Gendrasic maneuver shown here. A grade two reflex is a normal reflex. A grade three reflex is pathologically brisk. A grade four reflex is pathologically brisk with clonus. Broadly speaking, reflex hammers can be divided into weighted and non-weighted hammers, and each type requires a different technique. For weighted hammers, use the weight of the hammer and swing it like a pendulum. For unweighted hammers, use a flicking motion with your wrist. It's important that you become comfortable with whichever type of hammer you will be using. Okay, just relax your arm. Feel for the biceps tendon in the patient's cubital fossa and apply some Inside. tension with your fingers. Feel for contraction of the biceps tendon under your fingers and observe for contraction of the muscle. 
feel for the brachioradialis tendon in the anterior radial part of the arm. Tap the tendon and observe for slight wrist extension and elbow flexion. And try to relax this arm as much as you can. Support the patient's arm and feel for the triceps tendon. And now this side. Okay. Tap the triceps tendon and observe for slight elbow extension. Palpate, then tap the tendon and observe for knee extension. If you are having difficulty eliciting a reflex, try performing the Gendrasic maneuver to bring out a stronger response. Pull with your hands and bite down on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, and you can relax your arms. And now can I get you to lie back on your back? And just relax your leg here. Dorsiflex the patient's foot slightly to stretch the Achilles yeah, tendon. Relax your leg here. Tap and observe for slight plantar flexion of the foot. Now I'm going to tickle the bottom of your foot. For the plantar reflex, gently scratch the sole of the patient's foot and with a blunt instrument. Start from the lateral heel and move up along a curve to the ball of the foot. In healthy adults, the foot inverts and toes are drawn downwards. In patients with an upper motor neuron lesion, the big toe will dorsiflex and the other toes will fan out. This pathological outcome is known as Babinski's sign. There are five main sensory modalities that are generally tested for in the neurologic exam. Temperature, pain, non-discriminative touch, vibration, and proprioception. Okay, so now we're going to test sensory modalities. Assess temperature sensation by applying a warmed or cooled tuning fork to the skin. Is that cold? Yes. Is that cold? Yes. Assess pain sensation by applying a sharp object such as a safety pin or broken tongue depressor to the skin. It, can you close your eyes? Is this sharp or dull? Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Good. Assess non-discriminative touch by applying a soft object such as a cotton ball or tissue to the skin. Do you feel that? Do yes. you feel that? Yes. Assess vibration sensation by placing a vibrating 128 hertz tuning fork to a bony prominence. Close your eyes. Do you feel the buzzing? Yes. Okay, can you tell me when that goes away? Good. Assess proprioception by stabilizing the joint and moving the distal end up and down. Ask the patient to report what they feel. I'm going to move your hand up or down. Tell me which direction it's moving. Can you close your eyes? Down. Down. Up. Up. Excellent. Sensory information travels to the brain along one of two main pathways in the spinal cord, the spinothalamic tract and the posterior column medial lemniscus tract. Test for one modality from each spinal tract to assess both pathways in your exam. Due to the large number of areas and modalities that can be assessed during the sensory exam, this part of the exam must be tailored depending upon the clinical context. Focus your efforts on the affected area in order to determine the pattern of sensory abnormality. Depending on the site of the lesion, sensory deficits can present in a variety of patterns. For example, a lesion at the spinal nerve level will present in a dermatomal pattern. In contrast, a lesion at the peripheral nerve level will present in a peripheral nerve pattern, either as a mononeuropathy where one nerve is affected, or a polyneuropathy, where multiple nerves are affected. If you detect an abnormal sensation on the middle finger, it may be due to a median nerve problem, or it may be due to a C7 spinal nerve problem. These two lesions can be differentiated by carefully mapping out sensation on the rest of the hand. 
It's important to note that other patterns of abnormal sensation exist, but carefully mapping out any abnormalities and comparing this pattern to a dermatomal and peripheral nerve distribution is a great place to start. So that's the completion of the neurological exam, the motor and sensory components. Thank you for your time.